Developers building applications with Radis often have to interrupt their coding workflow to verify data using the Radis CLI. For example, let's say you're writing code in Node.js to store JSON documents at Radis, and you need to check how the data is going to look like after you execute your code. You are going to leave your IDE, open a new terminal, connect to the database using the Radis CLI, and then issue a set of commands to verify the data. Yeah, that's a lot of steps. But hey, can get worse. Maybe you don't remember the exact command to read JSON data at Redis, and you need to leave the terminal, open a browser, navigate to the Redis documentation to learn how to use the command. This usually happens several times a day, and this is not cool. But you know what is cool? Being able to stay in your IDE and verify that JSON data visually with only a few clicks. I'm here today to share that this is not possible by using the VS Code plugin for Redis. So your first step is going to be installing the plugin in your VS Code installation. So with the VS Code open, click on Extensions and then search for the Radis plugin by typing just Radis. You're going to notice that there will be different plugins uh, focusing on Radis, but you're going to search for this one here specifically that is named Radis for VS Code. If you're in doubt about which one to pick, make sure that to check the author here, it must say Radis.io. So you're going to click install, and after this plugin is installed, it is ready to be used. You're going to notice the R here from Radis in the column here. And if it's not showing right now, you can simply click on these three little buttons here, and it's going to list all the plugins that you have installed in your VS Code. Let's check now how to create our first connection to see how this plugin works. Now that we have the plugin properly installed, let's go ahead and create our first connection to a Radis database. So I am going to close this page here for a second, and then I'm going to click on the plugin. And if this is going to be your first time interacting with this plugin, you're going to notice this message. I add your first database to get started. So it is my case here. So I'm going to click on connect database. And then you are going to be shown this set of parameters that you have to provide data to. So the most obvious one is going to be the host and the ports. So in this case, I have the database uh, deployed locally here with Docker. So uh, the host is going to be this one. The port is 6379, so it's OK. Um, I can also create and set aliases for our databases. This is important because, like I mentioned before, you can create multiple connections with this plugin to different databases. So you can give specific aliases so it's simpler to locate them. Um, if you have authentication enabled, you can use the field username and password to provide uh, data to. Uh, I'm not going to change anything because everything looks fine here. So I'm going to simply create add Radis database, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click it. And as you can see here, we have our first connection to a Radis database. One thing that is important to, to know here um, is all the keys from the Radis database is going to be listed here in a hierarchical notation, right? Why is this important? Because uh, depending on how did you structure your keys, you're going to be able to either navigate visually in, in these keys using this notation. For example, all right, uh, this, if I expand account and index, I have this key here whose value is this basic 64 uh, data here. But if you look to the actual key, you're going to notice that the key parts are separated by column, right? So this is a uh, common practice for Radis practitioners out there. And the, the interesting part here about this plugin is that it's able to parse this notation and show a little bit more easier with this visual notation. So you can navigate um, in, in the keys, right? Also, you're going to notice that this plugin supports different data structures from Reddit, which is pretty awesome. So here I have a simple string, my key, right, with no TTL and the value is being set to Rifrate, which is my nickname, by the way. Um, and then also I have here a rash, right? So in here, I also can create like multiple fields for that given entry of my key, right? So the key characteristic of hashes. And also you have the concept of JSON, which is, uh, if you don't know this, like Radis 8, as has support for JSON documents. So you can store JSON documents into Radis so you can perform uh, searches later on, either like specific searches using the common searchy approaches or 
create a combinator approach with vectorial search searches. So this is important because uh, Redis can be very powerful if you explore these additional data structures that are only available at Redis. So in this case, if I click here and one, I ha actually have a lot of JSON documents start here. I'm going to pick one here randomly. And this is a key that, as you can see here, is using this kind of a support separated by column notation. And then I have the entire JSON payload here being shown very easily for you, right? So uh, if you remember, like if you have to kind of issue the same command to look to this data in the Radis CLI, you would have to kind of start in front of the root of this JSON document and you're going to create an expression, which is a JSON path, right? So you can visualize the data. Visualize is kind of a more like an expression here that I'm using that I, because in there you would only see the text for the um, for, for for the actual JSON document. Here you actually are visualizing the, the document. And the interesting part is that you can not only visualize, but you can also delete and added some of the fields. So if I wanted to change this value here, I could simply update it here to something different. And this is it. I've just updated the value of this JSON document associated with this key, right? So, and I could create more entries here. So this is to show you how powerful this plugin can be to your development workflow. So you can streamline tasks like uh, changing values real quick just to see if this is going to affect some of the behaviors of your code, or perhaps you just want to look how the JSON document is looking like after you have serialized it with uh, your given programming language that you are using to see if there are other applications or other codes is going to be able to read that data as well. So now that I've shown you this, let me show a little bit of a trick that this plugin also makes available to you. One of the things that you can do with this plugin is also interact with the Redis CLI from this connection that you created here. It feels like counterproductive because I've just said in the beginning that the whole reason why you would use this plugin is to kind of a, be a proper replacement for you to avoid having to leave your IDE and go to the Redis CLI from time to time. But uh, the reality is that sometimes uh, it's not just about reading or writing the values using the Redis CLI. Sometimes you would like to kind of test a command or a specific command because you want to make sure that this command is the, how is going to be the behavior of that command into a specific data that you are inputting into Redis, right? Or perhaps you are using the advanced capabilities of the Redis CLI to monitor the database, to monitor the keys, check the sizes, whatever is the use case. But instead of actually kind of a having to jump to a new terminal and having the Red CLI installed and then be able to kind of a create the connection right there all over again, you can simply go ahead here and in the connection that you created, you click on this CLI uh, icon here and you are going to be presented with this new tab here on VS Code, which is the Red CLI, right? So what is the actual difference here? The difference is that um, this is going to be like a built-in Redis CLI within Visual Studio Code. You just skip completely the whole like connecting to the database part because the connection has been inferred from what you have already established. And this is going to be the database that you are going to be interacted at the moment, right? So for example, if I'm going to read that key called my key that I've shown before, so I can read the values that I could also, obviously, it's just like a very silly example, but anything that you would like to do in a normal workflow with the Red CLI, you can do it here. And you're going to also count with the code completion, which is something pretty cool that this kind of extension does, right? So all the commands from Redis 8 is going to be available here. And as you type, you are going to be able to kind of a, uh, use the L to complete uh, approach, which is very handy if you don't remember the syntax of a specific command. Now that you have seen how this plugin works, let's do something a little different here. Let's add another database, but this time it's going to be a database from Redis Cloud. So I'm going to click here on, um, actually I have to kind of create, get the connection from the Redis Cloud account. I'm going to click on this connect button and my database 
Um, I'm going to copy all this information that is going to be necessary to establish the connection in the Red CLI client. And I'm going to click on Add New Database, right? So I'm going to simply copy here all the in uh, the information for for to establish the connection. Um, and then make sure to also click here on this Use TLS button so we can start using SSL when interacting with the Redis Cloud. So I'm going to click Add Redis Database, and then voila, the database has been added. So if you expand here this Redis Cloud database, you're going to know that this database has no key properly created, and this is the perfect time to actually create one. So let's go ahead and add a new key. And then for this key, we're going to create maybe a hash, right? So this is going to be like my key three, right? And I'm going to create a field here called name whose value is going to be Ricardo Ferreira. And this time I'm going to set a TTL for this and then we're going to click, simply click on add key. So the key has been added and properly stored on the Redis database sitting on Redis Cloud. So what do you think? It's so cool, right, to be able to stay in your IDE and very effortlessly to connect to your Redis database to read and write data. If you like this approach, don't forget to leave your comments here and share your feedback about the specific workflows that you are developing with this plugin and perhaps ideas about what other features we should be in including in the VS Code plugin for Redis. Also, if you like this video, please click on the like button. This feedback is very important to us so we can understand what more content like this we should create in the future. And speaking about this, if you're interested in knowing what other content will be coming in the future, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.